Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at an app called Hazel for the Mac. Hazel is an automation app that lets you basically watch for files that go into certain folders on your computer, like your downloads folder, for example, and based on certain rules that you set up, you can do things to those files. And I'm gonna show you five examples today of what I use Hazel to do on my personal computer that I find really, really useful and I think you'll enjoy as well. Now, I'll put a timestamp up here for where the screen share starts, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention that I wanted to talk about Hazel for a long time, but I've never really felt comfortable doing it because I'm definitely not an expert at using this app. There are so many things you can do in Hazel that I don't even touch on. There's a lot of things that people do with like OCRing PDFs and like sorting them and tagging them to certain ways. I have no idea how to do that. I have no use cases for that. I have no incentive to do that, so I don't do that. But I think my use cases are pretty universal and I think would be useful to people. So I wanted to share that anyway. But anyway, I get this weird feeling sometimes that I'm giving off the impression that I'm an expert in everything that I talk about on this channel. And while I am an expert in some things, I'm not an expert in most of the things. I'm just an enthusiast who likes to use them and wants to share how I'm using them and what value I'm getting to hopefully give you guys some inspiration for what you can do to make your computing lives a little better. So that's all I wanted to say before this video. Let's jump into the screen share. Okay, so we are looking at Hazel on my Mac right now, and I've got four rules here running on my downloads folder, and we have one on the applications folder, which I'll show you at the end. So we're just gonna go through them. Uh, the first one is called old files, and old files is basically just a way for me to not have my downloads folder just explode um, with millions of files that I never know what to do with. And so basically it's looking at a single rule that's date added is not in the last 30 days, and if that's true on any file in my downloads folder, it moves it to a folder called old downloads. If we go to the downloads folder here, you can see that's that's it. Um, we just have one folder with 82 items in it that I need to do something with. Um, but you can do other things. If you want to move it to the trash after 30 days or any timeline you want, you can do that. There's all these other things you can do. You can basically whatever you can imagine <laughs> you can do uh, with uh, Hazel. Um, you can add tags to it, color labels, like if you want to just mark them as like with like a red label, you could do that. You can do multiple things. So there's a lot of flexibility here, but I've chosen to just move them to this folder um, that is a slight inconvenience and will maybe inspire me to move them elsewhere. Obviously, it's only sort of successful, but that's the first rule I've got set up. Uh, the next one is one I really like. It's called convert bad images. So I I'm just so annoyed by WebP and HEIC images. I know that they're technically superior to JPEGs in many ways, but they're just still inconvenient even in 2023 sometimes. They just don't work how you expect them to work in every single app. And a JPEG is just more convenient for me. Um, so I have this uh, one called uh, convert bad images. If any of the following conditions are met, if the extension is WebP or the extension is HEIC, it's going to run a shortcut called convert to JPEG. I'll, this is one I made myself. It's very simple, but I'll put a link to it in the description for you. I want to run that shortcut, and then I want to move the original file to the trash. I don't want it anymore. So let's take a look at how this one would actually work. So I'm going to turn this back on to make sure that it's actually running. And so here's my downloads folder. And let's say I'm just browsing the web. Oh, this is an image that I need. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to my downloads folder. It's a WebP image. Ooh, that's a little inconvenient. But, ooh, it's actually just flashed, and now it's a JPEG. So my shortcut uh, basically takes the file and converts it to a JPEG, and then Hazel, as the second action, moves the original file to the trash. So as far as I'm concerned, in normal day-to-day -day use, like I'm not even going to notice that happening. It just happens right away. I have a full-quality JPEG, looks great, super flexible, can use it anywhere. I really, really appreciate this little one. This is actually maybe my most used one. It's just so convenient. Okay, so this next one is really rad. It's called Move DF Vids, um, which is Digital Foundry videos. Um, so basically, I'm a patron of Digital Foundry, and one of their Patreon benefits is uh, that you get to download high quality versions of the videos they produce. And I like to save those, and I put them into an Infuse library um, that I can just watch on all my devices really easily. So I really like that. And so basically, um, what I've done is you can use one of the rules as source URL slash address. It contains rscdn77.org is going to be obviously different for everybody, but I've noticed that's what all Digital Foundry videos are. And so I have a file downloading right now, actually, which should finish up in a second. And so basically what this does is let me lets me go to their site, lets me download the video that I want, and then I can stop thinking about it. I don't have to do anything else at that point. And I just know that once it's done and in my downloads folder, it's going to be moved over to my Infuse library, uh, which actually lives inside uh, my Mac mini, uh, which is on the network. So it takes a you know a minute or two to move some of these large files. 
we're going to do it a local transfer so it's much faster for the demo here but um, yeah basically as a video that i know goes in my infuse library enters my downloads folder it's going to move it there automatically for me so i've got the empty folder here it's in my downloads folder i'm not going to have to do anything it's already gone and over here in infuse library there it is ready to go ready for infuse to pick up and add to my library super awesome i really like that one for my own personal use now this next one also uses a shortcut it uses uh, federico vaticci's shortcut called apple frames which he just put out a big update uh this week as of recording um, and so basically this puts screenshots that you've taken on your devices, on your Apple devices, and puts them into a frame that looks like they're on a device. And so I'm going to show you an example here with an Apple Watch screenshot, but I've got mine set up to basically look at the pixel height of the images in my downloads folder. And if it's 502 pixels tall, I know that's an Apple Watch Ultra screenshot. If it's 2796 pixels tall, I know that's an iPhone 14 Pro Max screenshot. Uh, so we're going to airdrop a file over from my iPhone. And so that's going to go into my downloads folder. And you're just gonna watch it happen, right? It's gonna be coming in. There it is, it's a PNG, and Apple Watch screenshots are okay, um, but it's really nice to have them on a device. And so you can already see Apple Frames has presented me that, hey, I framed one screenshot for you. I'm just gonna say quick save it to the finder. There we go. And so this is what I airdropped to myself, which is fine, but is just kind of not good for sharing. And here's what Apple Frames made for me. And again, completely automatically, um, I'm actually going to go back and airdrop myself an iPhone screenshot so you can kind of see how that works. But I'm just airdropping myself a different one now. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max screenshot. We should see the pop up here in a second. Quick save it to Finder. Cool. And there we go. So that's that screenshot that I gave myself, but in an iPhone frame instead of just the uh, screenshot itself. So that's a really awesome one that just helps me automate making my screenshots look better and bring them into other projects without any effort at all. Absolutely love that one. Okay, and then I've teased it even though it's not super exciting. It's probably the least exciting of these, but it's one that I like. Um, basically, I have a ton of apps installed on my computer and eventually I just have more than I actually need and space is at a, at a premium on my device. Uh, so I wanna basically know what haven't I used in a long time. So I have this other rule, watching the applications folders to say, if the date last opened for an app is not in the last six months, just put a yellow label on it, which lets me just notice when I'm in the applications folder that, oh, I haven't used this app in a while. Do I still want it? Do I want to uninstall it? Um, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to run this rule now. And then you should see in a second, a couple of the apps here. Yeah, so like Loom, I haven't opened. Um, iStat menus is a little weird because it actually is running all the time, um, but I technically haven't opened it, I guess. Playdate mirror. So a couple apps in here have been just marked as yellow and it doesn't change anything. The apps still work and every, Thing, but I'll just know that, oh, I haven't used this in a while. Do I actually still want it? Um, so that's a really nice one as well. So yeah, hopefully some of those or at least one of those was inspiring to you if you have Hazel already. Um, I think Hazel is not a thing everybody needs, but if you do have these like specific use cases, um, I think it's really helpful. And if you have anything else that you use this app for, I'd love to see it in the comments. Let other people know what you can do with this app because it's super, super powerful and does much more than I showed here today. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.